how to help small businesses <coughs> grow the tax base. You know, there's everything from housing to education, um, encouraging innovation and trying to foster a culture that will allow people to start businesses, um, to employ a couple of people, to educate them, to give them workforce skills, to go work at Chobani or Oma Gang um, or Ioxis or, you know, Larry's Custom Niece that is a, was a great partnership um, to help the ag community. Access to markets, trying to coordinate our resource, resources for streamlining transportation and getting ourselves into markets <coughs> to get our farmers and our ag producers a higher premium for their product. Trying to get what we make here out into the community. We all know that traded industry is really what's going to drive the economic growth of our businesses. Selling our products more than with the benchmark is usually about 60% of getting what we make out into the greater world is a global economy. How do we tap the international market? How do we tap the New York City market? How do we tap other states? Um, and then the other piece is community development. How do we make our communities more vibrant so that people want to come here and spend their money? Um, the city has spent a tremendous amount of effort and focus of making Main Street a really vibrant community. They're encouraging small business owners to take Main Street storefronts. They're having more events. And I think that we can see for those people that are coming down to Oneana, we're really seeing that it's a really wonderful, well-diverse um, community. And so we try to spread those initiatives around into other smaller places so that people want to buy a house, that they don't have to drive a half an hour to go get uh, milk and bread, that they can live in one of these more rural communities but have access to things that they need. I did sit on the uh, Governor's Regional Council for the Mohawk Valley and I think that we're sort of seeing a big push and the timing is right now for us to start making partnerships and to be working together. Um, one of the big things that I saw that we had a hard time from what Cedar County bringing was that we don't have a priority list of projects. We're not very well organized. Where do we want to put our focus? And I just wanted to, I did bring two <coughs> down copies because they are 295 pages long of the regional approach. Um, the strategies that have been implemented from the regional level are applicable from <coughs> the regional level and all the way down to the county level. And there are groups working, um, I think in part this group will be, I'm having conversations with Senator Seward, working with the county board and the other economic development boards to take the strategies that were developed and to take the resources and the assets that we've identified and let's sit down and try and figure out how we move projects, how we coordinate projects locally so that we all understand that they're going on, so that we have things to be proud of, so that we know that there are good opportunities that we can grow and that we can leverage. And just quickly, one of the, just to get you sort of thinking about how we pigeonhole, for lack of a better word, um, different projects in, and trying to get them coordinated and finding the right partners, is we want to look at opportunities that create business investments. We want people investing in their plants and machinery and equipment and in people. So obviously that is our, our main priority and how do we how do we amass enough resources that will help businesses make these strategic investments? Transportation and infrastructure investments, water, sewer, roads, um, telecommunications, all of these infrastructure that is done from a government standpoint has to be brought together in coordinated and strategic ways so, so that we're putting our money where it should be, can be leveraged the best. Um, downtown development and main streets. Um, we want communities, especially in rural areas like ours, you know, where you can't be in Manhattan in 20 minutes or you don't want to be there, um, or you don't have to go from Cherry Valley to Oneana. I mean, how do we make our, our smaller communities more vibrant that provide sort of the atmosphere so that people want to live there and they'll fix up houses and they'll send their kids to school? Edmiston and Burlington have a tremendous opportunity to start investing in their downtowns. You know, maybe they're not going to be thriving and have theaters, 
but you have a way of trying to fix up houses. You have a tremendous amount of workforce, and you have dilapidated housing that you could fix and put, you know, be sold for what people who are working in a plant can afford. We're not talking about $300,000 homes, but we're talking about affordable, safe housing that people will want to live in and will send their kids back into those schools. Um, can I just follow up with this? I heard a lot of, and though I, I agree with supporting businesses through that, but I've heard a lot of spending money and no plans for how you're going to reduce costs for those of us who are actually running a business. Workers' comp, regulations, and so on, you know, the line goes on. You guys all know what those aptos things are. What are you guys doing as a plan to reduce costs to run a business? So that we can hire people, so that we can <coughs> rent, you know, space to run our business in. I heard a lot of spending money. I didn't hear anything about how you're going to reduce our costs. Well, so, I guess I, I, I guess I would interject.